SMT Nation, we back. Nation, there was uh, rumor and speculation uh, potentially that at and was, I don't know, I guess working on a seismic shift to its wireless networking plans. And I asked around, I asked some people, I checked in with some sources, and it is it is going to happen. All right, They are indeed shifting away from Nokia and shifting towards Ericsson on a national network build and future it, as as some of you may know uh you know the the reason why this is huge is because this is going to impact a large geography across the u.s and while i don't think it's an impossible task it is going to be a time consuming task and you know it, it's 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 going to be it's, it's huge this is a huge shift there's pros and cons to this that's what I want to discuss in today's video, as I do have a couple more details and I have a couple things to share with you guys uh, when I was kind of looking into this uh, this situation. So I'll be sure to link this press release here between Ericsson and AT&T. This goes back a couple of years, and it probably supports kind of the direction that things are going and maybe was the precursor to where uh, this move comes from in terms of its origins. Okay, so link for the article will be in the description as I disclose some of these things that I've uncovered and discovered and uh, ways to support the SMT YouTube channel in the description as well. Okay, so the, the, the concept of AT&T switching away from Nokia and moving towards Ericsson for a national build is unprecedented. Uh, I've never heard of a U.S. carrier going with one single vendor in this case, Ericsson, for its entire solutions of, you know, cellular radios and antennas, the things, the radio gear that goes up on the tower sites. And there's pros and cons to this. And that's what I want to discuss here. So the, the concept of them moving away from Nokia is huge because Nokia, as a RAN vendor, or AT&T, is like 70 to 75% of the geographical space across the country for them. Uh, when I when I looked into it, Nokia was like most states, right? So if you look at the 50 plus, or excuse me, um, I, I look at the, I don't know how many markets it would be, but basically by states, right? It's Texas, Florida, California, and then a couple of mid-U.S. states. They're, those are the Ericsson states for Nokia. The rest are all, or excuse me, the re yeah, the, those are the handful of states for Ericsson. The rest of them are Nokia. So a shift from Nokia to Ericsson is going to be a huge change. Uh, that, that, that Just a handful of states for Ericsson. So switching is going to be time consuming. It's going to be a long process. And it's probably going to take several years. Now with respect to the decision to do this, this is where things get kind of, you know, looking at it from pros and cons. First of all, Ericsson probably is the best work vendor when it comes to gear, you know, they, they are the best manufacturer. The performance of their radio gear is industry standard. It's better than Nokia. It's better than Samsung, right? I, from what I'm hearing is AT&T may have chosen Ericsson for a specific reason, and that is Ericsson can provide a true all-in-one solution for all the different frequencies that AT&T currently deploys, right, the cellular bands, and what they're going to support in the future. So this would mean things like the 3.1 gigahertz frequency auction that's up and coming in the next couple of years. Uh, anything that comes out with regards to like 6, 7, or 8 gigahertz frequencies, 12 gigahertz, and so on. Ericsson must have been able to assure AT&T that they would be the first to offer this type of a solution with respect to having multiple frequencies working on multiple radios and the pressure here is that on tower sites you have a limited amount of space and weight that can be supported on the different racks for the different carriers so that appears to be the the main factor the decision came in at AT&T for the sake of you know that this is cost operations uh, you know they don't want to have to get another rack on towers and they don't want to have to change their leases and pay more the tower space 
that appears to have been the driving factor for AT&T. Now, the huge weakness here is going to be that AT&T has eliminated the ability to negotiate against other providers of, of equipment. No longer is Nokia going to be a player. No longer is Samsung a player. They have literally told Ericsson, this is all you. And Ericsson basically has no accountability. I mean, if there's supply issue, what, what is AT&T's response going to be? They have contracts only with Ericsson. So when I look at this from a negotiation tactical side of things, when I look at this from the supply side of it, when I look at you know the negotiation and the powers of that, AT&T has rendered themselves uh, powerless there. Uh, now I'm sure Ericsson, the only way AT&T was going to do this was with an incredible sweetheart deal, right? So if they're getting sweet deals and they feel good about that, but those other factors matter. Like Verizon uses Ericsson and Samsung. And I think that's the only way to do things. I think this there's a ton of risk in this, but streamlining the networking build offers incredible synergies, right? Ericsson is a phenomenal provider of radio gear. So it's not a bad decision in that respect. It's just a business principle. It's just a philosophy. What you're doing could be introducing risk in supply, in negotiations, in pricing. The risk is there. I don't know the details of the deal. I'm just thinking aloud and including from a business standpoint what AT&T may have done and put themselves into a corner in that respect. I see pros. I see cons. But... We basically have confirmation that this is indeed going to happen. And I think these are the main things to think about when you look at how AT&T made this decision. What do you guys think? You guys think AT&T was wise to do this, right? Streamlining and all those types of things, enhanced performance, you know, those types of things. Or do you think they're making a mistake from a tactical standpoint in negotiations and supply? Love to hear what you have to say on this. Do all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard.